ओम श्री साई राम वेलकम टू प्रशांत संदेश साई पर्ड्स ऑफ विजडम भगवान श्री सच साई बाबा इज गॉड इनकारनेट ही इज ऑमनिशियंट ऑमनिपोटेंट एंड ऑमनि प्रेजेंट दिस इज द पावर ऑफ अवतार्स ओनली ही रिसाइड्स इन आवर हार्ट and being omniscient can easily read the mind and heart of all his devotees he hears all sincere prayers and responds to them accordingly he guides us protects us and even rebukes us if required for our evil thoughts he picks up even the subtlest thought in the mind of his devotees well let me share with you some stories diana baskin diana baskin is from united states of america she came here along with her husband joel and little daughter all the three reached puttaparthi but diana was very much tensed till they boarded the flight because the uncertainty in her husband's mind regarding coming to puttaparthi for swami's darshan he was reluctant to come to swami anyway finally he boarded the flight and she felt relieved at prashantilayam they were well accommodated since Diana's mother had already arrived one month earlier but Joel had one problem about his smoking no such vices are allowed in the ashram so next day he went out of the ashram along with his wife to the hill top for a smoke sitting there and enjoying the scenic beauty from the hill top Joel suddenly shouted look look at that beautiful rainbow diana turned her gaze towards the wondrous sight in the sky the rainbow was a vertical line usually is quite unusual it vanished after some time joel very excited by now and said to his wife do you remember it was only last week i had expressed a desire that sai baba should materialize for me a rainbow and joel was under the impression that this desire was known only to himself diana and his friends in los angeles but how can the omnipresent sai not know about this when both of them returned to the ashram to their utter surprise kasturi welcomed them saying swami has called you both for an interview tomorrow morning next morning they arrived in the entry room as swami came down to the steps he laughed and he laughed aloud saying so how did you like my rainbow and patted joel lovingly on his back joel was speechless tears started rolling down his cheeks diana too had tears in her eyes back home when diana pleaded with joel to come along for swami's darshan he had put a condition that he would seek swami's darshan only if swami would show him a rainbow see that Swami the indweller in every heart knowingly fulfilled this condition Swami took his seat and everyone sat around him Joel sat right next to Swami when Swami inquired after daughter self Diana told him that the child was suffering from a cold and a stomach ache Swami rolled up his sleeves and with a circular movement of his hand materialized a fresh fig and gave it to her 
After the interview, Joel searched the entire market for a fig. He got the standard answer, this is not the season for figs, and you will not get them anywhere in southern India now. What could be the reason for Swami materializing a fig, F-I-G, for the child? Just moments before he did so, Joel had a thought in his mind. Can Swami materialize a fruit instead of the usual vibhuti? And the very next moment, the omniscient Swami materialized a fresh fig which was not available anywhere at the time. That is Bhagwan Sri Satsai Baba, our dearest Lord. Bhagwan Baba's glory has spread all the world and millions of people come to Puttaparthi for his darshan. Some of them are spiritual aspirants and some come for material gains. Well, it, is, uh, it was the year 1970. On hearing Bhagwan's Baba's glory, Sri Swami Virajananda, Virajananda Maharaj, who is now over 100 years old, arrived in Prashantalayam from Kashi. He was accompanied by 50 to 20 of his disciples. After having stayed in the ashram for about 20 days, he formed an opinion about Baba Das. What is it? See, Satse Baba is the god of foreigners and rich devotees. He is not an embodiment of love because if he were, he would treat everyone equally. What, what could be the reason for such an opinion? In those 20 days of his stay, Bhagwan Baba had ignored him completely. So Swami Viradhyananda decided to leave Prashantalayam and travel back to Dharmavaram. That night they decided to camp at Dharmavaram. He was resting in a room and his disciples were in the next room. After a while, someone knocked at the door. May I come in, please? The person allowed to enter, made a humble request, saying, Swamiji Bhagavan Baba has sent me here to take you to Puttaparthi. Vrijananda lost his temper and said, I will not come. He is a god of the rich. He is not an embodiment of love, as he claims to be. This person insisted, I have got a car and I will not move out of here, out of here, no, unless you come with me. Finally, Virjanandaji had no option and he left with the messenger. The moment they reached Prasantanalayam, Bhagwan called him to the first floor. Virjanandaji was about to pass a scornful remark, but Baba stopped him and said, let us first have our meal. Then you can ask me whatever you wish to ask. After the meal, Bhagwan Baba showed Swami Virjananda his right palm. On seeing the palm, Virjananda broke into sweat. He was all confused. What did he see in that palm? He saw all his disciples and his ashram in Kashi. He could simultaneously hear Bhagwan's words. Love, love, love. What is love? Do you think you can attain self-realization by abandoning your family and collecting thousands of followers? No. In fact, you are far from it. This is moha, infatuation. Only devotion and love takes you closer to God. Desires and worldly fame cannot take you close to God. On hearing Bhagwan's words, Swami Virjananda realized his mistake. He held on to Bhagwan Baba's feet and sought his permission to leave. Baba said, wait a moment. Virjananda sat down. For a moment he felt sleepy. When he opened his eyes, he realized that he was back in his room at Dharmavaram. My friends, please note this point. 
all this had happened in Puttaparthi Swami's interview room. When Rajananda closed his eyes, in a moment's time, he was transported to Dharmavaram. In a moment of time, he could not fathom how he reached there in a moment. He meditated on the divine lotus feet of Bhagavan Baba and realized that it was all nothing but Bhagavan's Leela. Now, Bhagavan Sri Satsai Baba is Shiva Shakti incarnate, as you all know. Time and again, he has shown this to his devotees. Several times, many Shiva devotees have had Bhagavan Baba's darshan in the form of their desired deity. Now, let me share with you a, a, a story. Well, Swami Vamadeva Maharaj, an enlightened soul, with a desire to attain liberation, Vamadeva Maharaj renounced the world and became a sannyasi. When he was 80 year, 85 years old, he felt that his body was now old and feeble, and any moment he may have to leave it. So with the aim to offer his body to the river Ganga and attain liberation, he traveled to Kasi. He meditated on the form of Paramasiva and jumped into the river Ganga. At that very moment, a miracle took place. He saw an effulgent deity with a crown of thick black hair on the head, Abhaya Mudra, a hand raised in blessing, and orange robe, instead of ash smeared camphor like fair form of Shiva he was meditating upon. It vanished in a moment. Next there was another miracle. He was sinking deep into the water. He found that he was suddenly being pushed upwards by a powerful force and he started floating on the water like a wooden log. A strong wave emerged in the silent waters of Ganga. He was pushed towards the shore and once again Ganga Mata resumed its calm. At the time Swami Vamadeva thought that maybe he should continue to sit there in Padmasana, lotus posture, so that monsoon floods will once again suck his body and it will be offered to Ganga Mata and Lord Shiva. On the same night, a senior officer and also a side devotee had a dream. He dreamt that a sannyasi was sitting in Bhagwan's lap and Baba was feeding him with a laddu, as if he were a small child. Next morning, this army officer went for a walk along the shores of River Ganga and he happened to see the same sannyasi there whom he had seen in a dream the earlier night. He was none other than Swami Vamadeva Maharaj. Urgently, he hurried to him, offered pranams, and started recounting the dream and praising Bhagwan Baba. Listening to him, Swami Vamadeva said, Well, I have not seen you earlier. Isn't this your imagination? And this officer began to describe Bhagavan Baba's divine form. Swami Vamadeva recollected the vision and he had seen in the river Ganga. It was exactly the same. Vamadeva Maharaj asked himself, Is this Sai Baba an incarnation of Shiva? His inner voice answered, Spend some more time with these devotees. Find out some more about this Parameshwara and then be assured. Accordingly, Swami Vamadeva stayed there for some time on the Manik Manikarnika, Manikarnika Ghat, uh, close to Ganga. He heard Bhagavan Baba's glory from the devotee and then he was convinced that this is Maheshwara and Sai were one and the same, and spent the rest of his life in meditating upon his 
Sai Maheshwara. This is the miracle of that saintly man. And in fact, when we try to know the story behind a little bit, see Kondamarazu, a pious soul, reciting in the remote village of Puttaparthi in Andhra Pradesh, once had an extraordinary dream. It was divine and wondrous. He saw a de deity of divine effulgence, who, however, seemed distressed. She was Devi Satya Bhama, Satya Bhama, waiting for her Sri Krishna, who had gone away. She was waiting for him. And she was waiting Krishna to bring Parijata, Parijata flowers. Day after day passed, but there was no sight of Sri Krishna. She was distressed and tears were flowing and from her eyes. It started raining heavily, but Satyabhama continued to wait, getting completely drenched. When Kondamarazu noticed her, she asked him to give her some shelter where she could continue her wait for Sri Krishna. The dream ended and Sri Kondamarazu made a resolve to build a temple for the Devi. Accordingly, he constructed a mandir. But due to shortage of funds, funds, a stone was erected in place of the idol. In this way, the commitment to Devi Satyabhama was fulfilled by Sri Kondamarazu. Puttaparthi becomes an abode of the Devi and therefore Bhagavan Sri Satsai Krishna had an incarnate, had to incarnate again in the village Parthi to meet Satyabhama who had been awaiting his arrival. Puttaparthi was formerly known as Gollapalli, meaning thereby the village of cowherds. Many cowherds, along with their wealth of cattle, lived in this remote village. One day, a strange occurrence took place. One cowherd noticed that one of his cows returned home in the evening after grazing with an empty adda. When this became an everyday feature, he sent out it to find the reason behind it and he followed the cow. What he witnessed was unimaginable. A snake came out of the snake hill, rolled itself, rolled itself around the cow's hind legs and began to drink milk from the adda. The cow herd lost his temper and he picked up a heavy stone, hurled at it and the snake and killed the snake. Ever since this incident, cowherd families of Gollapalli gradually declined in numbers and snake hills proliferated <coughs> all over. People believed it to be the curse of that dying snake. This is how Gollapalli came to be called Puttavardhini, a village, a village growing snake hills. In this time to come, it was abbreviated to Puttaparthi. When the second incarnation of Sai took birth in this village, in no time Puttaparthi was transformed into not only Gokulam, but a heavenly paradise. Today this village has prominent place on the world map and is a place of pilgrimage for millions of people around the world. Sairam will meet again.